We will start our Globus tutorial by learning how to install a personal endpoint. We'll be using a Windows machine for this tutorial, but many of the steps will be applicable to Mac as well. You'll find up-to-date data transfer information on our webpage, biotech.wisc.edu, and by clicking the My Data tab. Our preferred data transfer method uses Globus, which is a secure data transfer protocol that's been vetted by campus cybersecurity. We've written a tutorial on our website that takes you through every step of the Globus process, from logging in to managing files and transfers. Today, we'll be covering the creation of a new Globus endpoint. Globus is a secure way of transferring data between two endpoints, which can either be a server in a data center or a personal endpoint on your local computer. The Globus website has detailed information on how to install personal endpoints on Mac, Linux, and Windows. Today, I'll be showing you the process for installing Globus on Windows computer. If you do not have a Globus account, you can create one using the link on the login page. Most Globus identities will be formatted like an email address, in this case, user at globusid.org. More commonly, users will log in through credentials that can be linked to Globus. Accounts can be used from ORCID, Google, or your home institution if it's listed among the choices. We'll log in to Globus using our university credentials. After downloading the installer application for a personal endpoint, your computer may prompt you with a warning when installing an unknown file from the internet. This is okay. Globus is an application written for transferring large research data and is not commonly used by the general public. I will show you what happens when you do not have permission to install the application in the standard installation directory. The installer will show an error. It's okay if you do not have permission to use the standard installation directory. We'll abort the current installation and try again using a path where we do have permissions to write files. In this example, I will create a Globus subfolder under my user's documents directory. I will then proceed with the installation in this new directory. Once the installation is complete, we are prompted to log in to our account. Globus will then ask permission to create and name our personal endpoint. The endpoint label should refer to the name of the computer and not the name of the data to be transferred. On the next screen, we'll be asked to create a collection. A collection will contain the directories that we will want to share with Globus. We will name the collection and give it a description if we wish. We can now click the link to access our collection and exit the setup. Some users may want to change the files and folders that are accessible within the Globus collection. One of the easiest ways to access Globus is by using the Globus icon in our system tray. On Windows, we use the Options menu item to set the folder permissions, but note that this is called Preferences in the Mac menu. The plus and minus boxes are used to add or remove folders from the collection. We'll also need to set the permission so Globus can share the content or write new data into the folders. As you can see in my example, once we remove the documents folder from the Globus collection, it will no longer be accessible from the web interface. Globus was designed to securely share research data you will only be able to see and write data according to the permissions that are on your collection. 
Now that we've set our permissions to see and write files to the downloads folder on our local computer, we'll work on transferring data from another endpoint. We'll change the panel view on the file manager to click side-by-side -side view in the upper right-hand corner of the web page. Next, we'll search for the endpoint that stores the data we wish to transfer. We'll find the Biotech Center endpoint by typing in the search box and finding the endpoint for which we have access. Now we can use the navigation panel to find the files or folders we wish to transfer. When only a single file is selected, Globus will give you the option of downloading that file via a web browser. It is important to note that the download option is only available for single files. The download option is not available when multiple files or a folder is selected because it is not optimal to use the web browser for this task. Instead, we will need to start a transfer job to move multiple files or folders to our endpoint. After we click the Start button, we can see the pop-up indicating that our job has been scheduled. We can click the link in the pop-up to see the job details and logged events for our transfer. At any time, we can click the Activity tab to find our previous jobs and return to our Transfer Information page. After our transfer is complete, we can turn to the File Manager to refresh the navigation panel and see the newly transferred data in our directory. We will now cover some other useful information that may help you use Globus more efficiently. You can directly access the Globus website to transfer files and see previous activities by clicking the Globus icon in your system tray. If we use the endpoint frequently, we may want to bookmark the location for easier future access by clicking the bookmark icon on the side of the folder path. You can find your past bookmarks by navigating to the bookmarks page or by clicking the bookmarks tab when searching for a collection. Now we will transfer some data through the advanced transfer and timer options available through Globus. For this example, we want to create a scheduled data synchronization task so we don't have to log into our endpoints and transfer data manually. We can specify the transfer options to only transfer new data set fail conditions, and decide what notifications we want to receive. In this situation, we want to schedule a repeating daily sync job to run at midnight every day. We'll make sure to label the job according to the data that we are transferring so that we can find and manage the job later. As before, we can see the results of our previous transfers by navigating to the Activity page. The Timers tab at the top of the page will show the schedule of timer jobs. We can manage or delete the jobs from this page. You can navigate to your account page to see and manage your existing Globus identities. You can also remove or link additional Globus identities to your account in cases where you have multiple accounts, such as a personal Gmail and a university account. You will only be able to see and write to endpoints for which you have permission. It's important that your Globus identity be given permission to collections before you can transfer data. Thanks for watching our Globus tutorial. There's more information available at globus.org.